Elish clothing is kind of boring. I've known for ages I wanted to rework it, but it felt weird just quietly changing it. And doing it all in one go felt like a lot, so I just kind of avoided drawing people from Elish. But you know what, it's been long enough just dressing them in generic ancient Greek slash Roman. I've got a few models here to help. They're from the story I originally made Elish for, before I realised I preferred world building to writing. We've got Aracida, a woman in her late 20s, Angal, a man in his 40s, Lilu, a young man from Enkayabu, Asha Anat, the teenage high priestess of the moon in Elush, and Telmo, a young Busan woman. Clothing varies a lot within a society, and while there's no way I can deal with all the nuances straight away, I want to at least lay some groundwork. Before the makeover though, a quick note. Clothing is something I've been apprehensive about because I want to avoid cultural appropriation. It's unfortunately pretty common in fantasy to have a culture that's meant to be fantasy Africa, for example, which relies on inaccurate stereotypes and lumps a whole lot of people together. Especially bad when you've also got really well-defined analogues to distinct European cultures and then other continents just get mushed together. Or specific sacred clothes practices like Inuit chin tattoos, having their importance and origin removed, and being used to make a culture seem sexy or savage. But I also don't want to be stuck working with cultures I belong to, because it would feel sad and unrealistic making a world that's just white and Anglo. So while I'll take inspiration from cultures that aren't mine, I'm not going to claim that my world building is intended to represent anyone in the real world, and I'm going to avoid directly taking anything as best as I can, especially sacred or closed practices. I want to respect real life cultures, and I want my own to feel plausible, but unique. Ideally, you can look at them and not really be able to place where they're from. You might be able to identify specific inspirations, or a rough area, but I never want them to feel like a fantasy knockoff of anyone in particular. Bearing all that in mind, it's makeover time! So a few times I've drawn the Elouge with paint on their face or body, and I think I want that to be a distinguishing feature of the Elouge look. Painting the skin can be pretty, and quickly convey social information. It also reminds me of the patterns on painted walls, which the Elouge have domesticated. White stripes in particular can prevent insect bites, according to a study on body painting styles used by people in Africa, Australia and Papua New Guinea. I'm also thinking about ancient Egyptian perfume cones, which were cones of fragranced wax worn on the head. So maybe I'll combine these. The Yaluge paint their arms and the backs of their hands with geometric patterns, using a mixture of pigments and perfumed oil, so they smell good, avoid insect bites, look pretty, and also possibly prevent sunburn. Tying back to the Moondor video, they'll almost always have a red band around their wrists. I haven't decided yet what the rest might mean. Particular motifs might indicate social status, or perhaps people just paint whatever they want. The Elish are also going to wear makeup of some kind. Makeup is one of those things that varies a lot throughout history in different cultures, so I'm going to draw up a bunch of different designs that might be used at different times. Here are a few examples. My favourite of these elements is the white patches above the eyes, inspired by red pandas if I remember right. So I think that'll be pretty common. The red and white dots on the cheek too, because they serve a similar purpose to modern blush and highlighter and dark eyeliner to emphasise the eyes would go in and out of fashion. I've already established that the Elouge have a variety of hair colours, partially because it plays a role in attraction, so I'm thinking they usually show off their hair, in elaborate braids and buns when they're working, occasionally loose when they're just chilling. Also just because that's how I've always imagined them wearing their hair. But they do live in a fairly sunny place, so maybe some kind of thin veil or shawl to protect the face? I'm not really decided on this yet, but I do know that in Enkeabu they use pearl silk, harvested from mussels, to make a thin golden veil that protects them from the sun and insects. Maybe that'll be popular in the wetlands. Okay, now the clothes themselves. Elush has a fairly arid, warm environment so they're going to want loose, airy clothes. The most common fabric is going to be linen, harvested from the river, nice and cool. Next there's wool, which isn't too hot as long as it's woven finely. 
Then there's pearl silk, and leather, straw and beads are used sparingly as decorations and accessories. Threads are spun, dyed, and then woven into large squares and rectangles. They often have either a simple geometric design across the whole thing, or a more elaborate pattern right at the edge. Or both, but that takes a really long time, so it's not very common. I think the Aluge would like the idea of patterns being baked into an object rather than lying on top, so they don't usually embroider their fabrics or dye them once they're woven, the same way you wouldn't paint on a pot after the final firing. Fabric is usually left unsewn, so that it can be folded, pinned and tied into loads of different shapes. Maybe sewing is what you do when your fabric gets worn out, and the real flex is being able to afford and maintain a lot of large flowy fabric squares. You can get a surprising amount of options from just rectangles and squares. I saw this compilation of TikToks from a woman using scarves to make clothes inspired by Chinese hanfu, and that was one of the things that got me finally making this video. One common shape is this, with the fabric wrapped around the body and fastened at the back of the neck, and a belt securing it around the waist. Another common form is similar to an ancient Greek kiton, secured by clasps at the shoulders, but less symmetrical. The basic silhouettes are unisex, but women wear more practical styles, while men are more flashy. I'm thinking a lot of pleating, especially for young men. The Alush associate young men with flowers, so maybe pleats are arranged to resemble petals. For footwear, the Alush wear simple sandals, to protect the soles of their feet without getting too sweaty. I'm thinking the sandals tend to be made of woven straw, potentially with thin wooden soles for sandals intended to last longer. Rich people might decorate their sandals with beads, but you're not going to do that unless you don't mind your sandal wearing out and the beads falling off. So most people might just dye the straw to make patterns. Then you can accessorise. Maybe a second belt with a pattern that coordinates your robe. Earrings? Maybe an apron of beads or braided straw. Men might wear flowers in their hair. Women might wear berries. Peacock feathers are restricted to those who work for the temple. Accessories are probably the element that varies most with time, social status and region, so I'll probably elaborate more on it later. Okay, so, that's a very, very general overview, and clothing will vary a lot depending on period and place and context and a million other things, but I think this is sufficient for the Aluge to actually have their own visual identity, and in my opinion at least, they look way cooler now. <laughs>